Hey guys this is Ganshim welcome to the world trending news subscribe our channel for more updates. After the floods, assessing Hurricane Sally's damage as an Alabama resident, Toby Wallace has seen his fair share of hurricane damage, working for the U.S. Federal Emergency Management Agency, where he handles flood insurance claims. But that did not prepare him for Hurricane Sally, which flipped his camper and pushed it into his Gulf Shores home, breaking off the front steps. High winds drove water through the vents and roof, flooding a room. Wallace and thousands of other residents along the U.S. Gulf Coast are just starting to tally the damage from Hurricane Sally, which could come in anywhere from U.S. $8 billion to U.S. $10 billion, well above earlier estimates of U.S. $2 billion to U.S. $3 billion, said Chuck Watson of Enki Research, which tracks tropical storms and models the cost of their damage. Hurricanes are normally associated with massive wind gusts and rains on the coast, but inland rains causing floods over a vast region can make a storm even worse as rivers and streams spill over, flooding communities along the way and causing the damage to as much as double. Slow-moving storms Harvey, which hit Houston in 2017, and Florence, which slammed the Carolinas in 2018, dumped damaging rains. Sally made landfall at Gulf Shores on Wednesday morning as a Category 2 hurricane on the five-step Saffir-Simpson scale of intensity, but carried heavy rain inland as far north as Virginia on Thursday, according to the National Weather Service. Sally's immediate impact likely caused around US $5 billion in damage and cleanup costs, Watson said. The storm has moved away from the coast but will bring several more inches of rain to the US southeast before dissipating. If you're sitting on a river 5 miles 8 kilometers, inland, you've got the wind and 2 feet 0.61 meters of rain dumped on you, then 4 to 6 days later a few feet of water comes down the river, Watson said. Inland rains also could affect cotton and peanut harvesting, as five counties in central Georgia got more than 10 inches 25 centimeters, in 12 hours, Watson said. Several rivers in Alabama and Florida have not yet crested and are not expected to reach major flood stages until Saturday, according to the National Weather Service. Extensive water damage evidence of water damage was rampant as the floods receded along the coast. The facade of an eight-floor apartment building in Gulf Shores was completely blown off and damaged kitchens and bedrooms were visible, with furniture soaked from the torrential rains that pelted the area on Wednesday, September 16. Lee Hayes of Perdido Key, Florida, at one point during the storm, had her kayak ready on the couch and put life jackets on herself and her dog, Rico, as water rose under her deck, rushed past her bedroom and submerged her car. I'm like okay, we are not going to drown, Hayes, 56, remembered thinking. I'm really tired. We were under my blanket and I held him close.